Like many of you out there, I'm a huge fan of Batman. Good or bad, I'm compelled to consume anything and everything to do with the Dark Knight. It's my burden, my curse. I play the games. I read the comics. I watch the animated series. I even buy the novelty towel that doubles up as a cape. In fact, I'm wearing it right now. So with season three of Gotham upon us, I decided it was time to get caught up. So I watched five episodes a day over the last 10 days and came to realize three things. First, it'll never be Gotham Central. Second, if you can get over that, it's actually quite good. And third, buck cheek cramps are very, very painful. Like many of you, I was skeptical to start with. The first half of season one is messy, directionless, and full of painfully awkward pandering. But I stuck with it. And much to my surprise, I was glad that I did. As a TV show, Gotham isn't exactly up there with Breaking Bad, The Wire, or even Batman, the animated series. But not everything has to be. For fans of the Batverse, there's a lot to be enjoyed in the series. So if you haven't given it a shot, or maybe dropped out early, here's a few reasons why Gotham is worth your time. But viewer beware, there's gonna be some spoilers ahead. Sir, look at me. Not at them, look at me. My name's Jim. Jim Gordon. The vast majority of stories involving Jim Gordon are set in his dog days, when he's already been appointed commissioner. The most notable exception is Batman Year One, in which he's a rookie cop, but most of his life is depicted within these two time frames. You see, Jim Gordon is Batman's staunchest ally, but we've seen so little of his time in Gotham, which is where the TV series comes in. Here he's a newcomer to the GCPD. He's punched surfer teens in the OC, served the law in the Southland, and now he's ready to dispense some pills of justice on the streets of Gotham. Got your pills right here? Huh? There's some pills? Gordon is a paragon of law and order, and his first case is the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne. This investigation underpins the first two seasons of the show, but in between his hunt for the Wayne's killer, Gordon deals with gang warfare, corruption in the GCPD, conspiracies in the government, and of course, his fair share of weird villains. The city of Gotham is Jim Gordon's crucible, and we get to watch it slowly erode his morals and challenge his resolve. The Jim Gordon we're all most familiar with is weathered, tired, and at times looks like he's barely hanging on. It's clear he's been through trials and tribulations, and Gotham gives us a chance to see all that happen. For years, Batman fans have been told how Gotham is a corrupter and how it can turn good people bad. This is something that the series explores really well with Jim as the unfortunate victim. He is stubbornly faithful to the letter of the law, but as the series progresses, he's backed into corners and forced to make compromises. Episode by episode, we see Gotham chip away at him, and by the end of season two, we're starting to see it take its toll. It's not the most nuanced exploration of the character, but it's definitely a new perspective. We need each other. We're family. While Gordon tries to clean up the streets, the criminal underworld stands on the brink of all-out war. At the top of the food chain is Carmine Falcone, who faces competition from the rival Moroni family. But there's also dissent within his own ranks from Fish Mooney, who feels it's time for Falcone to step aside because he's old, and he doesn't understand the kids, and because she has powerful hair. And everyone needs to respect the hair. Boy! Sorry. If you let this hair go frizzy, you will be. That's not important, because on the chessboard that is Gotham's criminal underworld, it's the story of Oswald Cobblepot, a pawn that rises to be king that proves to be most compelling. Young Cobblepot begins as a lowly human umbrella stand, but gets to sneaking, snivelling and backstabbing his way up the ladder. He hobbles around the mob world, playing double agent, triple agent, police informant and any other role that will get him ahead. The great thing about watching Cobblepot rise to the top is the way that everyone underestimates him. At the slightest hint of danger, he's on his knees groveling, pledging new allegiances and betraying allies. But behind it, there's a wickedness and cunningness. He's truly a terrible person, but you also kind of want to see him succeed. He spends the first season wrapping Gotham's most rich and powerful around his finger before outright igniting a war. You know, a standard day for the Penguin. There's not a lot of memorable Penguin stories out there, so Gotham stands out as one of the stronger interpretations of the character.
Before long, Gotham gives up on trying to be a gritty crime drama and embraces the Batman lore, and that's when it starts to come into its own. It dares to introduce big villains, and it does a pretty decent job with it. For some, it opts to play it safe, like with Richard Sionis, who is a Wolf of Wall Street type exec that's making his employees fight to the death. They don't make a big deal about him, but eagle-eyed fans will know that he goes on to become the sadistic Black Mask. For others, like Jerome Valeska, it's a little more daring, and with good results. Who is Jerome Valeska, I hear you ask? Well, nobody really. Just the son of a murdered carnival performer. Right up until you see that ear-to-ear -ear rictus grin and hear that hair-raising laugh. Is he the Joker? The show never quite says, and that's the beauty of it. Hang on to your hats, folks, cause you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> One of my personal favorite things about Gotham is what the show does with Edward Nigma, AKA the Riddler. The TV series casts him as a forensic expert for the GCPD. Constantly being stepped on by his colleagues causes a split personality to emerge. On the one side, we have the socially awkward guy trying to fit in. On the other, we have the mad genius persona, tempting him to give in to his darker urges. The transformation is spread across two seasons, but it's thrilling to watch. And over time, we see him transform into one of Batman's most troublesome adversaries. Why are you doing this? Because it's fun. In season two of Gotham, the writers become a little less reluctant to draw from the vast amounts of Batman lore out there. The short Victor Freeze arc, which is really annoying because the show keeps calling him Victor Fries, bears a lot of similarities to Heart of Ice from Batman the Animated Series. It shows Victor fighting to save his wife Nora, stepping into villainy as time runs out and cops close in on him. Like Heart of Ice, it has a tragic conclusion that's befitting of the character. If you haven't seen Heart of Ice, by the way, stop what you're doing and watch it because it is the best Mr. Free story ever told. Then there's the introduction of Theo Gallivan, a highly intelligent, politically minded figure that quickly wins the hearts of Gotham citizens to become a shoo-in for replacing Mayor James, who, by the way, has come a long way since being the hypochondriac from Scrubs. Things get a little more interesting when it's revealed Theo Gallivan's real surname is Dumas. He's one of the last surviving members of a long forgotten family that tells tales of a superheroic crusader called Azrael. Shall I tell you a secret? Then there's a matter of Indian Hill, a plot of land near Arkham Asylum that is rumored to house dark secrets. It purports to heal the sick, but there's clearly weirder things going on. I mean, there has to be. After all, it's headed up by someone very strange. The series starts plucking from sources from across the years and stacking all of it on top of each other. That might sound like overkill, but Gotham does it in a way that creates something that feels uniquely its own. And that's why you should watch it. So there you have it, a few reasons why I think Gotham is actually a good Batman show. I really didn't expect to enjoy it, or even look forward to season 3, but here I am, telling you it's worth checking out. So are you planning to catch up with Gotham, or do you completely disagree with what I said? Let me know in the comments below, or come and find me on Twitter where I'm at Tamor H. Now if you excuse me, I've got some office crime to fight. <laughs>